Hey guys, what's up? It's Olivia, long time no see. Welcome back to my channel, Olivia's Grad School Vlogs, where I like to share my experience as a media effects graduate student here at Penn State. I know it has been a really, really long time, which is why even though I just washed my face, I'm like, you know what? Let's make a video. Let's get back to creating content because it is something that I really, really miss. In today's video, I would like to talk about my comprehensive exams, which is a huge milestone that I just passed in my program. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment below what you are excited about for spring. It's a little sunny outside right now, despite it being only 40 degrees, but I'm excited for it to be sunny and to actually go out and enjoy the sun and feel warm. Also, I have been posting more on my Instagram lately. I am branding that now more towards being a graduate student, uh, being a professor in training, eventually being a professor. So if you are interested in this aspect of my life, I am trying to post more just general posts and content, reels, and stories related to this. All right, let's get into talking about comprehensive exams. Now first, I want to preface this with the way that comprehensive exams are done in my personal department are different than other schools communications departments, than other departments at Penn State, than other universities in general. I'm just telling you how they are done at my school and then I'll tell you the ways that they are different in different programs. First, what aspect of it is the same everywhere? Essentially your comprehensive exams occur after you have completed coursework. During this time, each member of your committee, so I have four members, assign you a question, it's like a half a page prompt. You have one week to write a 10 to 15 page response to that prompt. Two weeks later, you then talk about it, defend it, and if they agree that, hey, you've learned something in your program, you know what you're talking about, you're a competent writer, then they pass you along and you become ABD, known as all but dissertation. Once you reach that point, literally all that you have left to do in your program is a dissertation, right? Propose it, conduct it, defend it, you're done. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I just defended my comprehensive exams this last week, but I actually took them the week of February 14th. That was the Monday that I started, and I started prepping for them at the start of the semester. So how was it done in my department and at my school? Well, in my department, we are allowed to talk with our committee members beforehand, so I did this last semester, and come up with a question that fits the area that that committee member is assigned to. Let's backtrack, let me tell you what a committee is. During your graduate program, you will have a committee, so that is three or four, some people have five, I don't know why, um, professors that are basically guiding you through your PhD process. The idea is that they each have an area of expertise that all comes together to guide your dissertation. I am interested in influencers, mental health, social media, health media effects, and so I have one committee member that does influencer and celebrity endorsement. That's Heather Schoenberger, by the way. I then have Dr. Jess Myrick, who is my health media effects person. For my outside committee member, I have Andy High from Com Arts and Sciences, which is in the College of Liberal Arts here. He is my computer mediated communication social media person, and I've taken a couple classes with him. And then my advisor, Dr. Mary Beth Oliver, she is my methods person, which means her role for my comprehensive exams as well as my dissertation is really helping me have strong methods when it comes to conducting my study, making sure I'm including the right variables, the scales, doing the results and statistics correctly, etc. Although her role she is supervising every aspect of this project, so she does a lot more than just methods. Anyway, for the comprehensive exams, each committee member's question centered around the area I assigned them, right? Influencer celebrities, social media, computer media communication, methods, or health media effects. So last semester, I talked with them, and we worked out basically this half-page, single-spaced prompt from each of them that was going to guide me on how to study for these. Now with comprehensive exam questions, these prompts, these essays, the topic should not be out of nowhere, right? It should be things that you've covered before. So I've actually taken a health media effects class. I have taken a computer mediated communication class. And in all of them, I have talked about mental health, influencers, etc. So I've done a lot of coursework on this already. 
This was helpful for conducting my reading list and outline. Now for some people, their committee member will actually give them a list of here's the articles you have to read for this question. Um, I got that for one of my questions, although it really only addressed one part. And then for another question, my advisor or my committee member said, hey, you can use our syllabus from the independent study we did, but you can also go outside of it. So that was helpful at least to just let me know, okay, where to start for conducting my own reading list. How I studied for comps was essentially each week to 10 days for the first, goodness, month of the semester. I would read a bunch, I would take notes and also do an annotated bibliography as I was reading. An annotated bibliography is basically what are the important points from this reading that I think will be useful for my comprehensive exam question. And then you can kind of outline, okay, this addresses this part, this addresses this part. So I did that for my influencer one, my health media effects one, my social media, computer media communication one, and my methods one. That is one that I literally did not work on at all until it actually came to writing week. About four weeks into the semester, I had my writing week for comprehensive exams. So you have exactly seven days to write and answer the prompt. So at 8 a.m., I think on Monday, I received an email with my official questions. Mine personally did not change from what my committee members and I had decided upon. However, I know of other people whose questions changed slightly, um, not too crazy, but changed slightly. And then I know of even some people in my program who weren't given exact questions beforehand, just kind of the topic area and then given a specific question morning of. I then spent that week writing. It was a long week. It was an exhausting week. I was mentally exhausted. I was emotionally exhausted from the stress of just the, the last, you know, month, five, six weeks of just reading and doing outlines and trying to find more articles and trying to make sense of things that I found confusing. But writing week, I pretty much finished Friday evening and then Saturday, <laughs> oh my god, I thought Saturday was going to be like just a couple hours and I thought that was going to include me adding things, tidying up things, reviewing, doing references and then I'd be done. No, I worked from nine to four straight doing what I thought was gonna be just like a couple hours last minute touches. So once I got that done, I prepped the emails, I slept on it overnight to make sure that nothing else came to my brain, and Sunday I sent off my papers to my committee members. Two of my papers ended up being 15 pages long, not including title page or references. Another one I think was 13, another one was 12, or it was either 14 and 12, but yeah. Because of spring break, my defense was actually three and a half weeks after I had submitted. It has to be at least two weeks after you submit. In order to prep, I just reread my papers. I made notes of a couple of errors that I made. At one point I said descriptive norms was prevalence of peer behavior. It's actually perception of prevalence of peer behavior. I didn't know how picky they were gonna be. I wanted to make sure that they knew that I knew what a norm was. So I just went through and made sure that like, if there are any errors like that that I noticed later, that I could tell them at the beginning of the meeting. For the meeting, we had to schedule out two hours. So I showed up to the meeting a couple minutes early. My advisor was there and she told me what was going to happen. Essentially when we start the meeting, this was on Zoom by the way. We started, the first thing that was going to happen was the committee was going to go into their own breakout room. They are going to decide who wanted to go first with asking me questions about the essay that I wrote for them and then we would discuss, and then they would go back into a breakout room, decide if I passed, come back out, let me know if I passed or failed. So after they came out of the breakout room, they asked me if I had anything I wanted to address. I said the descriptive norm thing. I also told them, I know my methods question needs work. Um, told them a couple things that it needed work on, but said I'd be happy to talk about it more once we got to that question. And then honestly, I feel like my questions were pretty chill. In my influencer paper, I talked a lot about how influencers are more peer-like or more friend-like, almost on the same level as their followers, whereas with celebrities, there's this big distance between celebrity and fan. And so my professor was asking me, 
do you think that this peer-like relationship can have an effect on something like health campaigns? I told her, I definitely think it could. There is this model called the Entertainment Overcoming Resistance model that says we have this reactance when authority figures tell us what to do. So one way to kind of get over that hurdle is by having peers or friends or characters that we like tell us what to do or encourage us of what to do. We talked for a little bit, they went into a breakout room, came back out, said congratulations, and that was that. The meeting lasted for a little less than an hour. It was kind of anticlimactic, but in the best way possible. Um, I was stressed that morning a little bit. Yeah, it went really great. I am very, very excited to be done with my comprehensive exam. This was something that has been a huge stressor for me, and now I'm working on my dissertation proposal. Briefly, I want to say how comprehensive exams might be different in other departments, other colleges, other universities, etc. At some colleges or universities, you will know the topic that your committee member is going to ask you about, but you will not know the question. Sometimes your professors will give you an exact reading list of articles or books and you only need to be able to draw from that for your exam. At some universities this is open book like ours was, at other ones you are put in a room for four hours, you are given the reference list for the articles you are supposed to read, and you have to write a paper based on that. I am very happy that mine was open book over the course of a week, I got to prepare for my questions and knew what I was getting myself into. So that's been the main thing that I have been up to lately in addition to teaching a class, but this is, in terms of milestones, what I have been working on. That's all for this video, but I am going to try to start posting more, so if you have any requests or suggestions for content, let me know down in the comments below. I know this isn't the usual sign off for this channel, but mm, I'm taking it. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Keep dreaming out loud. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.